Good morning, everybody. Derek Hart here from Styles Machinery. I'm the Applications Manager. We're here in our Grand Rapids facility today to talk about panel saws. Today, we're going to look at our Homax Hotec B200. This is a fully CNC controlled panel saw. So, if you've never used a panel saw before, if you have questions about the panel saws, you can go through the basics of how they work. Panel saw, the idea is I have clamps on the back of the saw, on the back of the saw carriage, excuse me, that will grab onto my panel, it will pull it back with the cut line, and then it will um, drop the beam and make the cuts. So, all this is controlled from my power set control. And right now I have an error. So the nice thing about the power test control is it tells me I've got a problem. It tells me right now um, the saw, the feed is in the saw in the system. And so I'm going to say, you know what, we're going to take it out of line mode. I'm going to go to manual operation. Take it out of line mode. Go back to op operation. What the saw is doing right now is it's referencing itself. So we'll turn it on for the day. The program fits about moving back to a uh, reference switch coming forward. And on this machine, we have a secondary uh, uh, power concept clamp. It's doing the same thing down below. Now underneath, where you can't see it right now, is in my cut line, my saw carriage is running down the same thing, finding its reference switch, coming back to its position so it knows where it's at. So this is a two-axis CNC controlled uh, situation. My program fence knows where it's at, so is the saw carriage. Now on a, pro on a panel saw, my saw carriage will actually pop up from the cut line. The main saw will come up and I'll cut from the top down. Up in front of that, I have a scoring saw. And the scoring saw is going to be coming from the bottom. This is a little bit, about two millimeters. It makes a slight score in there, so if my main blade comes through, it doesn't chip out the bottom. This allows me to cut delicate materials like a melamine or a laminate cleanly on both sides. It even gives me a superior cut on plywoods and, and MDFs, things that may or may not have a chipping uh, factor. So, whenever we come into here, I go to my power touch and I say I want to do a pattern entry. And it says, I'm going to, do you want to save this one? I'm say no. So I have a new one and it says, what's the length of the pattern? And I'm going to say this is 97 inches long. And what's the width of it? And I measured this already. It's 31.75. Now, if I want to go with different measurement modes, I can easily come into here and change my mode to metric inch for fractional inch. So if I want to do 31 and 3 quarters, I can easily do that as well. So now I have the pattern size. And this sheet that we're going to use right here today is that size. So we're going to then turn around and go into size entry. And now I'm going to go ahead and start making cuts on here. So I'm going to make a rip. And this is 31 inches. I've got some parts that need to make it 20 inches wide. So I'm going to type in 20 inch rip. And then it says, what do you want to do with that rip? And so I'm going to tell that to cross cut it. And I need some pieces that are 30 inches long. And I can easily, I have a few options here to copy or I can move over and say another one at that, add another at 30 or I can just hit F3 on my control and it copies it over. Now when I come down to the bottom, it's going to tell me that, all right, here's your scrap you have left. This is 10.4 inches roughly, remaining dimension. But it's telling me that dimension right here is actually 9.78. Now if you look at the top here, the, this is my rear trim, and it's really big. Because the saw knows how deep the clamps are. When it clamps onto the part, it has to get out of the way for the beam to come down so the saw blade doesn't cut through the clamps. So knowing that dimension is optimal, it's faster if I don't need that material for yield. It can just make some of the scrap here and some of the scrap back here. But if I need that space, it can then turn around and I can say, no, you know what, I need 10 inches out of that one. It automatically takes that rear trim down to the minimum trim that I need to get for the quality that I want to do on here. From here, I can cross cut this one and I can say I want one at, um, say, 20. And I'm going to copy that across. And for this last piece, I'm going to do a 12 inch piece and I'm ready to go. So, as an operator, my machine is referenced and I'm ready to turn on. I turn on my air cushion here. And what this does is turn on my air table. My air table allows it to float the part so that it doesn't stretch the part. But also, it's got a big stack, it's not very heavy. So, as an operator, I'm not straining myself to push the parts around. I can simply hit produce. Produce. 
graphically, my saw is going to show me what's going on. It's going to say, all right, put that part in there. I place it in there. And I hit no. same time or do you want to do one at a time and it defaults the fastest way and we're going to do continue placing strips next to each other so i'm going to click on that now it's showing me the part the small one against the fence parts that were 20 by 30. This one were parts that were 20 inches long. So we're going to cross cut different dimensions at the same time. So you can watch these go back at different rates. So we have a power contact clamp on here that actually allows it to just grab the first rip separately. The main program fence grabs the second part. So if I put these back in and hit go, I've been looking last week and this week is my power touch. So it's the same control concept between my routers and my edge fanders and my saws, uh, my sanders. Anything with a home ag name on it, chances are we'll run the same controller. And this, this idea of a unification of control allows my operators to be comfortable running this versus running the next machine. Because it's not a totally different thing. It does different than the CNC router does or from a sander, but the control is the same. So things like errors come up and look the same way. So right now I'm, I'm in a mode to say that I'm uh, allowing it to, because I'm not in line mode. It's saying, you better watch it, you're not in line mode right now. And it says fine. I say okay. So now I told it to take the blade down to the tool chain position. And within the tool chain position, We have an interlock on here, so the one minute timeout before it will actually let me open the door. I can change my blade, my tuck, and my scoring blade. So this is my scoring blade within here, and this is my main blade. So as it cut, the main blade was on top, scoring blade on bottom. 
to change the blade out. It's a simple Allen wrench. Like turn, loosen it. And the blade comes off. The blade is conical, so that it's tapered up like a uh, triangle. You look closely at that cut angle of that, the conical blade, which allows me to make adjustments to it. So you can control, as I go higher, it gets wider to match the main blade. And I go left to right to match the position of the main blade. And then once again, simple operation. The only important thing is to put the blade on the right direction. So you here, this way it should be going. You get a hand tight, a pocket, and then just tighten it with the allen, and you are done. close that door and the machine knows what's going on. And this is what it's told me now is to say, hey, um, you were in there, do you want to go to your tool settings? And I say, sure, let's take a look at tool settings. And under tool settings, it knows everything about that blade. How many times I've ran it, how many lengths of cuts I've done with it, when was the last time I sharpened it. If I want to make adjustments to this blade, I go to adjustment and I have up, down, left, and right to say, I want to make it go up, I want to make a wider cut so that it matches my main blade. Or down, it's narrower. Or left to right to match the main blade. So it's all CNC controlled on this. So making a blade change, you have a few minutes of adjustment and you're back in production. Well, okay, so today was just an idea of a basis of what a panel saw is. So if you like what you saw, give us recommendations of what else you'd like to see and we'll shoot more videos in the upcoming week. Thank you very much.